Hi. In the first video, I mentioned that all of calculus is based on uh, the idea of functions. And so now in this third uh, video, we're going to uh, discuss, get into functions and uh, start uh, explaining them. So what's a function? Here's the way I like to describe it. Suppose you have yourself a machine. Think of it like this, where you put in a number and you get a number out. So I have one, a machine in mind. Uh, if you throw in a zero, you get a one out. If you throw in a one, this machine does something and throws out a two. If you put in a two, the machine uh, does something to it and out comes a five. Did that surprise you? If you put in a three, the machine does something to it and throws out a 10. If you put in a, um, say a negative three, the machine does something to it and also throws out a 10. And so do you have any idea what this, what this function, what this machine is doing? The one I have in mind does this. Whatever number goes in, it takes that number it squares it, and then it adds 1. So if you notice everything I have here, if you square it and add 1, you get, you get the thing on, on, the, on the right. All the numbers that you put into a function is called the domain. And all the numbers that come out when you throw all the possible numbers in is called the range, or image. So those are a couple keywords. And this is the rule of the function. I'll, I'll just put function up above here. And the rule is basically the thing that tells you what the function is doing to each number of the domain. So those are the parts of a function. So given a function, you often want to ask some questions about it. For example, this particular one, you might ask, um, what's the largest number ever to be able to come out of it? Is there a largest? What's the smallest number ever to be able to come out of it? Um, as you put in larger and larger numbers, bigger and uh, greater and greater numbers, uh, what happens to the numbers that come out of the function? Do they keep getting bigger and bigger? Do they get smaller? What happens to them? There's all sorts of questions that you're interested in, in knowing, and uh, you've maybe heard the, the maxim, a picture is worth a thousand words, that's certainly true of functions. So with regard to a function, you, if you can draw a picture of it, you can answer usually all those questions very easily. So that's what we want to do. Descartes is the person that helped us do it. Descartes is the philosopher who not only came up with the maxim, I think, therefore I am. He basically wanted to know what, what, what can I know for sure in life. And uh, he thought about it and realized, well, I'm thinking, and since I'm thinking, I must exist. So he started a whole area of philosophy. He was called a rationalist, and others uh, that came along with him, the people who basically uh, said, what can we achieve just by thinking? And Descartes thought very carefully about mathematics, and one thing he also realized about mathematics is that you could take two areas of mathematics, namely algebra, things like x plus 2y is equal to 5, third algebraic example, and also things in geometry. Geometry, you have lines and circles and things like that, and he found a way to be able to combine these two areas of mathematics. And the way he combined algebra, which is working with uh, symbols, variables, and numbers, and geometry, which is basically using a straight edge and compass and just a sheet of paper and pencil, things that you wouldn't think would have much to do with each other, he found a way to combine them by, uh, com by being able to, to take each one of these expressions and draw a picture of it on, on, the, on a board, on the plane, and so the plane that you get by, by uh, basically finding a way to, to um, draw all these expressions as a, as a, um, as a graph, as a picture on the plane, it's called the Cartesian plane. So you basically take uh, the, the uh, a, a, 
plane of a blackboard and you put two intersecting perpendicular lines, you call this one the x-axis and you call the vertical one the y-axis. And then any point on the plane you can designate by just saying how far away it is from the origin. The origin is where these two things meet. So for example, if I'm three units to the right and two units down, that would be the point three, negative two. Uh, you always do the x uh, dis uh, distance first and then the y, uh, y distance. So this point right here would be negative four, uh, three right there, and so on. Here's the point one, one right there. Here's the point two, one right there. So uh, once you have uh, this ability to um, label points, then you can use that to um, graph, draw a picture of functions. And here's the way we do it. We basically say, okay, all the numbers that you put into the function, those numbers we're going to assign to the x coordinate of these, of these ordered pairs. An ordered pair just means it's a pair of numbers with a certain order, the x one first and then the y. And then the value of the function is going to be the y value. So for example, right now I've got, if I stick in a zero, you get a one out. If I stick in a one, you get a two out. Stick in a two, you get a five out. Stick in a three, you get a 10. Stick in a negative three, you get a 10. And so these all give rise to ordered pairs. Here's the way you would write them as ordered pairs. One, two. 2, 5, 3, 10, and 3, negative 10. So let's, let's plot those ordered pairs and see once what we get. Here's the point 0, 1. Here's the point 1, 2. Here's the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's the point 2, 5. I'm going to run out of room here pretty quickly. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's the point three ten. Here's negative three ten. And if you plot lots of other points as well, you'll see that the graph of this function looks something like that. And you put a little arrows on there to indicate it'll just keep going up. And so there's the, the graph of this function. And as soon as you see the graph, you can start um, answering some questions. For example, we see now that the smallest value ever to come out of the function looks like it's going to be one. There will be no largest value because it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, we have a certain symmetry to this function. Notice that we could basically fold it right over the y-axis. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but there's a symmetry there. Uh, we can also use the words decreasing and increasing. Uh, when we use those words, what we're referring to is the fact that as you move from left to right, the value of the function is, is going down. It's decreasing on this interval, and then as soon as you pass zero, now, as you continue on, the, the, as you go from left to right, it's, it's getting larger, it's getting greater, it's increasing. So uh, we can also have a constant function, which looks just like that, for example. So, uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that's the graph of the function. One thing to notice right away about a function is that just by the way we, we define it and, and construct it, for any value that goes in, we're only going to get one value out. So for any number that goes in, you get one number out, which means graphically that for any value here, there's going to be only one y value which is associated with it. It'd be impossible to have a function that would look like that and also have a part down here because that would indicate that for this value of x, I'm getting two different values of y out. So that would not be a function. So a function has that property to it. Notice that it is possible to have two different x values both go to the same y value. Both 3 and negative 3 go to 10, so there's, there's no problem with that. 
but, uh, but uh, as I say, for every value of x, you can only have one value of y. So, um, so that's, the, um, that's kind of the fundamentals of, of uh, functions. And I think we'll stop right there. And then in the next video, we're going to look at a bunch of individual functions. And we've got several other videos that are going to be on functions as well.